All right, so hello and welcome back to another 90 Day Fiancé video on Arthur TV. Today, we're back for part five of 42-year-old Danielle and her 27-year-old Tunisian husband, Mohammed. So last time out, we looked at Danielle and Mohammed's start to marry life. Just two weeks after the wedding, the electricity got shut off due to unpaid bills. And as a result, Mohammed left Danielle without telling her where he was going or how long for. He came back five days later, but things didn't get any better for the couple. Over the next year, they stayed together but were faced with constant problems. Rumours were circulating social media that Mohammed was being unfaithful to Danielle on what he claimed to be work trips, Danielle's family no longer approved of the relationship, and the pair were constantly arguing to the point that the police had to be called on numerous occasions. After a heart-to-heart -heart at the end of the video, it seemed that both Muhammad and Danielle had given up on trying to make the relationship work. But with neither seemingly prepared to put an end to it all, their future together looked bleak. It has now been 16 months since their wedding day, and Muhammad has finally received his temporary green card. But unfortunately, that hasn't taken any of the pressure off the relationship. Over the past two months, their fighting has gotten even worse, and the other night, things reached a dramatic climax. This time, Danielle had thrown all of Muhammad's belongings onto the front lawn and was screaming at him to leave. Muhammad then called the police, and when they arrived at the property, Muhammad said that they were getting a divorce and that he was leaving in just a few days. They told him that they were unable to do anything about the situation and that he and Danielle would have to cohabitate in peace until then. But unwilling to live in such a toxic environment any longer, Muhammad packed up his things and left. This time, it doesn't look like he's coming back. With days now having passed since Danielle last heard from him and no idea where he is, she and her friend Beth have been on a hunt to go find him. Muhammad had told Danielle that he had been working for a plastics company nearby, so she drove up to the factory district in Ohio to look for him. Unfortunately, the hunt was unsuccessful, and every factory they visited had never even heard his name. He lied. Of course he lied. I've been lying. I don't know what's going on. I'm hoping that it's just a phase and that he'll come back after he cools off. There's the other part of me that just wants to shake myself and say, what are you thinking? Because he's done so much to me. Good, at last she's finally waking up to it all. I can't believe there's even still a part of her thinking this is just a phase. It has been a constant struggle for the past year and a half. When is that gonna change? I mean, don't get me wrong, she's far from an innocent victim in all of this, but she just needs to have the courage to put an end to it all. And that is, of course, assuming Muhammad hasn't already. Although Danielle doesn't know where he is, the producers do. So when he went to visit one of his friends to speak about what's going on and where he stands on the relationship, they made sure the cameras were rolling. It's completely crazy. <laughs> What's going yeah. on? My name is Tom. Um, I know Mohammed. I happened to meet him at Walmart one day. Uh, we just started talking. We've become really good friends since then. How American is it to make a friend at Walmart? This is like the 90 Day Fiancé version of that cringe couple who met at Whole Foods. It's also quite an odd pairing, but Norwalk, Ohio only has a population of around 16,000 people. So if you live there, I guess you can't really be that picky, can you? Daniel is not the right person for me at all. We are completely different. The way that she's treating me, it's like not a husband. She's treating me like, more like a son. She was mean to me a lot. She was disrespectful for me a lot. I tried so many times with her and she said, okay, she's gonna try to make things better, but she never did. It's hard to tell whose side to be on here without actually being able to see any of it, and I'm sure she'll have her own side of the story, but I believe Muhammad here. I mean, we saw her at least promise to change when it came to telling the truth about her finances, and she kept hiding things over and over again, so it wouldn't surprise me if she was the same with everything else. Either way, although I can't imagine it was much of an epiphany, I'm glad he's finally realised that she's not the right person for him. Took him long enough, didn't it? I was asking myself, why do I have to be in that situation? Am I going to spend all my life being uncomfortable with someone like Daniel? I gave up to like almost everything in my country, my job, my friends, my family and everything. And you know what she did? She lied to me. 
Really? About her finances. She lied to me about everything. Starting off on that one big lie really did set the tone for the whole relationship, didn't it? Also, when he's saying like, why do I have to be in that situation? That's pretty much exactly what we were saying at the end of the last video. Like, why give up so much in your home country just to go to the US and settle for an even worse life? It would be interesting to see how everything would have gone had she not lied about her finances. But I think by now the problems go a lot deeper than that. So it probably just accelerated the inevitable. I was fighting with her, I, I like arguing with her. That night she went to the closet and she took all my, my clothes and started throwing them outside. So all what I did, I, gr I grabbed my suitcase, I put everything inside, I left. Unbelievable. I didn't let Daniel know where I uh, living after I left her because I knew that she's gonna show up and do some craziness. I kind of wish the producers had told Danielle where he was so that she would just burst through the door and start another fight. Like, I want to see some craziness. We hear so much how frequently they fight and how intense the fights are, but we never see any of it. First of all, it makes it hard to pick sides, but second of all, I'm getting major FOMO. They create loads of scenes for our entertainment. Can they not just manufacture a round two for the cameras? For whatever reason, they sadly decided not to, but Tom at least asked some pretty interesting questions. They got onto Muhammad's initial intentions with Danielle and Tom ended up asking him if he was even ever in love with her. It was like more feeling lonely than looking for someone to be like my partner in my life. I, I didn't have like a girlfriend before or like being with someone before, so it was my first experience. And I was thinking maybe the way the person is looking like is not very important as much as how is the person from inside how that person is gonna treat you but attraction like physical attraction it matters a lot oh poor guy had to date danielle to figure that one out the rest of it's actually quite sweet and given he's from tunisia i reckon this could actually be true premarital dating culture there is quite different and although he looks a lot older he is only 27 here he also started speaking to danielle when he was only 25 so it wouldn't be that surprising if he had never had a relationship before. I'm not sure whether I believe that he fell for Danielle because of her personality, but I don't think that's impossible either. Early on in the relationship, she was so happy to just be speaking to someone who was giving her the time of day that she was probably a very positive person to be speaking with. She will have been putting in a lot of effort too. And in the first video, Muhammad even said that one of the main things that he liked about her was how much she seemed to care about him. So maybe this is at least partly true. I'm not gonna spend my life by myself just because I had the bad experience with someone. The way I was thinking about it, I thought if my marriage doesn't work out, I will get my divorce and I will go back to my country. But I do like America because I got used to the culture. So I hope I can stay in this country. So is there ever a situation that would lead you back to Danielle? Surely not. Unless immigration turn around and say that he has to get back with her to secure the permanent green card, I don't think you could pay him to go back. Also, I really don't know how much it was always his plan to go back to Tunisia, and only now is he like, hmm, maybe I'll stay in the US after all. He is right to say that there's no reason he shouldn't want to stay and find happiness with someone else though, and he didn't waste his time starting to look. Just a few days later, Danielle found out that Muhammad was back on the dating site that they had met on and that he was now claiming that he was single. Other than a few brief emails and texts, Danielle hadn't really heard from Muhammad and hadn't entirely given up on the relationship. So this was pretty devastating news. It's insane that he's using the same dating website that he met me on. It's like a big slap in the face. Do you see why like everybody kind of was suspicious of him the whole time now. Like you're not blinded by love. It's kind of like you see why everybody hated him from the beginning. I didn't think he would do that to me. Yeah. Because I trusted him and loved him. Oh, he only left a week ago. They're still literally married and he's already back on dating sites. He moved on so quickly that she must realize that he never really loved her. And to be honest, I don't think she ever really loved him either. When she says it, it just gives me the energy of a 13 year old who says that they're in love with the person that they've been Snapchatting for a few days. Like I think she just loved the idea of having someone and I think she only trusted him because she kind of had to. I mean, if she didn't trust him, she would have had to face the fact that she was probably being used for a green card 
So it was probably more denial than anything else. It does suck for her though, that she went ahead with it all anyway. And now everyone's kind of like, I told you so. And it's even worse that it's also coming from her own teenage daughter. I don't think he ever really had the idea of being with my mom. I think she's still in a little bit of denial, hoping maybe things will just like suddenly flash back to what they were, but they're not. Basically, he really don't have to come back because mm -hmm. he got basically, I think, what he wanted, the green card. He got it and then he left. Mm -hmm. Why she's even talking about him possibly coming back is actually insane. I mean, it's naive to think that he would at this point, but to speak like she'd consider taking him back if he did is something else. At least she finally seems to have come to terms with the fact that that probably is what he came for. It's been over two years since they started speaking online, and this is the first time she's acknowledged out loud that he might just have been using her for the green card. I'm faced with a very hard decision. If he's not coming back, I need to either file an annulment or a divorce and try to get him out of this country. It hurts. Mm -hmm. But then I have to face reality that he wasn't here for the right reasons. See, this is the risk Muhammad took leaving her before he got the permanent green card. With the pain she's going through, she could genuinely just channel her anger against him and take everything away from him. If she gets the marriage annulled, that would basically mean that it would be considered invalid from the start, as though legally the marriage never actually existed. Without ever having married a US citizen, he wouldn't be able to get his permanent green card, meaning he'd be sent back to Tunisia. That would be pretty sweet revenge if she feels like he scammed her. Although, it's not going to be easy for her either. Given she's been struggling financially this entire time, neither a divorce nor an annulment is going to come cheap. This is going to be one hell of an expensive mistake, however this turns out. Well, it's now been two weeks since Muhammad left, and he's now decided that he wants to leave Ohio to get away from Danielle for good. At a local bar and grill, he's on the phone to his new lady friend Louisa, planning the next stage of his life in the US. So what's up? <laughs> yeah. I met Louisa online. She was very supportive and uh, she's always like making me feel good about stuff and give me advice. I'm getting really tired of this place. I'm not you. Don't you. Belong there. I, yeah, because I'm not used to be in small towns. Now I'm trying to fix my life and I am planning to move to Miami with Louisa. Damn it, Mohammed, not with another girl you've met online. Have you learned nothing? For goodness sakes. I mean, at least he's attracted to this one. He's actually played this whole thing pretty well, hasn't he? He got into the country using a desperate, unattractive older woman, bagged a green card, she was a pathological liar which gave him a valid excuse to leave. And now he's moving to Miami with a blonde bombshell. You might hate the game, but you almost have to respect the player. There's tons of opportunity and since I offered you to move with me, mm -hmm. you know, that's not like you're going by yourself. Okay. You know, so it's like two people, you know, splitting everything. So it's not like, you know, you're completely like on your own. Ah, uh, look at the way he's smiling at his phone. He definitely is new to the game, isn't he? I mean, I'm not surprised he's buzzing. After a year with Danielle, literally any other girl would be like prime Pamela Anderson to him. Although, it is a little bit suspicious, isn't it? Like, he only left Danielle two weeks ago and he's already planning on moving to Miami with this girl. There is no way they're this far along in less than two weeks. He's definitely been talking to her for a lot longer than that, hasn't he? If I'm not with Danielle, of course I'm gonna try to be with someone like Louisa because she has a good personality. She's always been there for me. Whenever I need her, I just call. You right. can't let those people there stop you from living your life and doing no. the things that you want to do. I'm worried more about the legal stuff, not about people, because nobody yeah. can stop me. I'm just worried about the legal stuff, like immigration. And so he should be. Around this time, rumours started circulating that ICE and the FBI were investigating him after his first season with Danielle set off alarm bells. Apparently Danielle's family members were confirming the rumours to news outlets and TLC even got contacted by ICE about the validity of the relationship. On top of that, in a few months, he's gonna have to apply for his permanent residence green card. Although him leaving Danielle doesn't mean that he can't still get one, he's gonna have to prove to them that it was a genuine relationship that broke down rather than a scam, 
which isn't going to be easy, especially with all of this going on. He's playing a dangerous game moving to Miami with Louisa at this point, but you've got to respect him risking it all to just do what makes him happy. It's kind of like stressful. But it would be more st stressful if you're doing it by yourself. I'm so glad to have you there that you can help me because I really trust you. And, and you're like me, one of the very, very few people I trust. So yeah. I think it worked right out then. perfect. Let's get it done. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, them trusting each other this much doesn't really suggest that they've only known each other for two weeks, does it? I wonder if this is one of the women he was supposedly being unfaithful with on one of his work trips. Also, when Danielle finds out that Muhammad is seeing someone else already and that he's planning on moving to Miami with her, she is going to freak. Whether she'll be too busy feeling sorry for herself or go all out to get him deported, I guess we're just gonna have to wait and find out. Well, that is unfortunately all we have time for today. So if you want to make sure you catch the next one, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss out. Also, if you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to leave a like and let me know in the comment section what you think of the story so far. As always, the links to my Instagram, Twitter, and other social media will be down below. So feel free to come drop me a follow to keep up with the channel, help me decide what future videos to make, or just say hi in between uploads. I'd also just like to give a very quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who support me and the channel over on Patreon. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.